time, I would like to introduce Auburn Athletics Director John Cohn. Good morning. We appreciate all of you joining us here uh, on a Tuesday morning. Um, first of all, I, before I get started, I want to recognize Coach Cardinal Williams, uh, who did an incredible job as our interim coach and just did a tremendous job as a leader, not only for our football program, for our university as well. And where, where's Carnell? Where's Good morning. Hey. I know Coach Williams had a great meeting with uh, Coach Freeze last night, and I'm just thrilled to say I think we're going to have two great leaders uh, leading this football program, and I'm so excited about that. Uh, love to thank our football team. It's never easy with what our football team has been through this season. We know they've been through a difficult time, but my goodness, the last four weeks they have played very, very hard football, and we really recognize how the effort that they've given. I want to recognize, yeah. I want to recognize Dr. Chris Roberts, who's been incredibly supportive throughout this process as well. And I want to get into the search just a little bit, and I'm going to get the star of the show up here very quickly, I promise. But because we wanted to do a thoughtful and thorough search, we spoke in person and electronically to industry experts, teachers, professional and college coaches, law enforcement officials, student athletes, parents of student athletes, and many others. We used a search firm and analytics firms, law firms. We spoke to many administrators at each institution that represented a part of all of our candidates' past. We were in search of opinion for sure, but more importantly, we were in search of the truth, and we found it. Hugh Freeze was at the top of our list from the beginning, and we never wavered from that. The combination of on-field success, student-athlete development, recruiting at a high level, along with Coach Freeze's personal inventory of his life, his transparency, and his family support were of the utmost importance to us in this process. In the short time, <clears throat> in a short time, I've become highly influenced by the Auburn Creed, and I refer to it often. As the Auburn family knows, the Creed states that we believe in hard work. Hugh Freeze was raised on a dairy farm. He knows what hard work is. He also worked his way up from the high school level to the very highest level of college football the Southeastern Conference. Coach Freeze was completely transparent with his past transgressions. He showed remorse and had an accountability plan that he's used for the last five plus years. Everything he disclosed to us turned out to be accurate after speaking with credible industry sources. In this way, Coach Freeze was honest and truthful, another Auburn Creed characteristic. Coach Freeze presented to us a detailed written plan that he has for each of his student athletes and directly involves their future, a preparation for a career after football. In this manner, he displayed a belief in education, another mainstay of the Auburn Creed. Perhaps Coach Freeze's greatest accomplishment is, there, is his relationship with his wife, Jill, with whom he has been married for the, th the last 30 years. Jill? Where's Jill? Yes, that's the rock star, Jill Freeze. <laughs> we also want to recognize and, and really thankful that they, they were here today, Reagan uh, and her husband, Ryan, Jordan and her husband, Mark, and Madison. Welcome to you all. And then with that, I would like to introduce to you Auburn's 31st head football coach, 
Coach Hugh Freeze. Thank you very much. Um, man, what an honor. War Eagle. War Eagle. And good morning. And before I start my comments, I, I'd also like to just take uh, a few minutes to. Um, I'm so glad that uh, the, the schedule for me at the end of the year married up with being able to witness um, your final few games here. Um, because what I witnessed, I thought, was one of the most outstanding jobs of leadership that uh, I've ever witnessed in college football. Um, being in this profession, I know how hard it is to finish seasons, even when you're doing well, even when you're bowl eligible, much less finishing a season playing with enthusiasm and passion and, and desire and excitement and having fun like what I witnessed uh, when I turned on the Auburn football games. And to me, it was a direct reflection of Cadillac and his leadership and how he led the staff. And those young men, I thought, was a brilliant job. And so it became very easy when I had my meetings with, uh, with A.D. Cohen, John, and Rich, and the other guys, I'd already done my homework on people that uh, we had in common friends and I knew my first priority uh, was I have to have Cadillac along my side to help me drive the culture of Auburn football and that meeting last night just solidified everything that I've heard and witnessed and it, it just I went to bed feeling really really good last night that Cadillac is going to be our associate head coach and running backs coach and <laughs> Just, uh, and I told him, look, you got to still do all those running up and down the sidelines because I can't do that. <laughs> and, uh, uh, I need you to handle that part of it. And I'm uh, just thrilled that, that he's going to uh, be with us and teach me uh, so much. Um, we're always constantly learning as leaders. And uh, I look forward to what he's going to be able to impart to me on the knowledge of the Auburn family and, and just the feeling that you get here uh, when you arrive. And he embodies it every single day, you can tell, and the passion he has for this place. And so thankful, so thankful he's going to be with us. Thank you to the media for being here. Truthfully, you're part of this process. And uh, you, you have to report uh, everything you have to report, but man, we, we, we covet you being around our program. We covet you um, hopefully singing our praises when we start getting this thing rolling. So thank you for being here to Liberty. Um, I hope that they can uh, hear this message, but uh, working at Liberty the last four years uh, for Ian McCaw uh, was one of the greatest joys of our, of our college career. Um, it came at the right time for our family. Um, it was just a, a beautiful um, experience. I didn't know if we could win when we went there. Obviously, they were transitioning from FCS, but with all of the support there and the culture we set, we were able to win a lot of big games and go to four straight bowl games. And to the Liberty, to uh, Jonathan Falwell, Pastor Jonathan, and President Prevo and the Board of Trustees and to Ian and to our team and staff there, just uh, I owe a great debt of gratitude. To the Board of Trustees here and President Roberts and Athletic Director Mr. Cohen, Rich McGlynn, Lee Van Horn, all of you guys getting to know you through this process. Um, I'll say this about our new AD and my, my boss. This guy will measure it a hundred times before he cuts it once now. <laughs> he, he's, he, is, he is as thorough as anyone I have ever met. And I think we are in great hands with his uh, heart for this place, his toughness, his, um, his, his uh, ability to seek wisdom. I just, I think he's a home run hire, uh, President Roberts, in my opinion, and He's got backbone and he's strong. And uh, I love that he was a former coach also. But uh, getting to know you guys um, was awesome. And thank you for uh, getting to know Jill and I and, and our beautiful family. 
um, to my family. You are the rock stars. You are. And I'm not going to get emotional today. No, I'm not, because this is a great day. It's something we've, it's something we've fought like heck to, to get to. And, uh, and I want to just say Jill is the most amazing woman uh, that God ever created. And I have the most beautiful daughters and son-in-laws, <laughs> even though I didn't like giving them away to them, and I told them that. I didn't like that, but they did all right. I like these guys. But uh, the, um, the toughness and grit uh, that my wife has to be a coach's wife, number one, and then to go through some of the things we've gone through, and the toughness of my children, and the love that they have for their father is uh, the most humbling thing that I've experienced. And man, what a, what a strong family the Freeze Five are. That's their text strand, the Freeze Five. And, what, and this journey we've been on in the college game, how incredible has it been? And we all end up in a place together because Jordan and Mark actually live here. And uh, now we, we get to all uh, be together and uh, family is everything to me. Um, on this earth and I'm just so grateful for each of you and all of your strengths and your beauty and your grace so I'm um, just honored uh, that you are so strong with me and um, in the words of Eric Church we got another great view here that we get to that we get to that we get to dance to after wins my parents they're they're the hardest working people I've ever known they're uh, my dad's full of toughness. My mom's full of grace. And um, he was the kind that if you got in a pond and you had to snakes all around you and get in there and get it done. And I didn't have an option. Uh, go get those cows. And that was 24. Uh, I mean, that was every day of the year. And I learned hard work and toughness from him and love and compassion from my mom. And they are here all the time. My uncle's here somewhere. He's the same back there and uh he's the mayor up in a town in tennessee and his he comes to all our games and here's what i hear from him after every game i tell you what i'd have done <laughs> that's what i get so dear friends the two are here they've never missed a press conference ever of any of my new jobs and uh, they're, they're dear dear friends so i'm so blessed and obviously um we are a family of faith and um god's faithfulness is so incredibly good to us. And I just, I don't know that I can put it in enough words of how gracious and good and faithful he has been to us. So I met with the team this morning. It was a, an incredible first meeting. I think that um, we're off to a good start. I look forward to getting with them individually, but I shared with them how we're gonna turn this ship and get out of the wilderness here that uh, we might be in a little bit. Uh, every job I've ever taken over has had uh, some type of uh, struggles uh, prior to our arrival, and we've been able to turn them fairly quick. And I look forward to that challenge here with this great staff that we're going to put together and these young men that are going to buy in. But they have to buy in to chasing a standard, and you have to set the standard, and, and we've got to develop that for everybody, find the leaders in the locker room that are going to adhere to that standard and lead us and be the voice in the locker room, the same voice they hear in the team room or they hear from Cadillac. We need the same voices in the locker room, and that's when you start getting something going that's going to be positive for change. But there are certain core values that I think we have to all believe in and buy into totally. And the first one is faith. And I don't mean faith in the spiritual sense like you believe, like I believe. I don't force that on anybody. It is who I am, and I'm far from perfect, but it's who I am. But faith in the, in the essence of you have to believe in something bigger than yourself to be a great football team or to be a great university, or to be a great family. It's really not about you. It's no, it's, you, it, you can't run fast enough, or you're not strong enough to do it alone. So you have to have faith in someone bigger than yourself, the team, everyone around us, the staff, and we have to lay egos aside. That's so the one thing I've just really respected about Cadillac in our conversations. I think both of us have been through enough where we just really, it's not about ego or pride. It's about, man, how do we get this done together? And hopefully everyone will follow that lead and we need players to do the same. So faith, attitude, attitude is how we talk to ourselves. So the Auburn family here and the Auburn players, they've heard enough of 
what's not right and what's not going right and what, why we're not winning and, and what the issues might be and how we're going to select a new head coach and, and all of those things. They've heard all of those things, but it really doesn't matter what any of those say. It matters what we say to ourselves in that team room. That's what matters. Coach Pearl, I don't know if he's here, but Coach Pearl, the job he's done here, I'm going to be just like Bruce Pearl if I, grow, if I can, except for I'm not taking my shirt off because I don't look as good as he does. But, but this guy is a, he's teaching a master class into how to get people to buy into a culture. And I look forward to spending time with him. He's been an incredible encourager to me through this whole process. And I know I have no idea how involved he was or not, but I'm just telling you, he, everybody I would talk to around said, man, Bruce Pearl, Bruce Pearl, Bruce Pearl. And I'm like, hey, Bruce, what's up? You know, and, and, uh, and, and man, he's just been, he would never say anything other than just encourage, man, just encourage, just encourage. And so I see why people are so attracted to him. And he wins, obviously. But, man, attitude, I guarantee his team talks to themselves differently than whatever secret sauce. Um, very few people have it. It takes tremendous mental toughness to get up every morning, do the right thing with great passion and energy, go to class, go to training table, go to treatment, come to practice, watch film, go back to study hall, go to bed, get up the next day and do it again. It's work. It's working, it's hard, and guess what? Some of those days you get punched in the gut in life and in football. And you have, the, have to have the mental toughness to get up the next day and do it again, and do it again, and do it again. And man, I've, I have fought this battle for the last six to seven years of man every day. Mental toughness, mental toughness, get up, do it again. Great passion, great energy, do it the right way. You don't measure up every day. Neither will our players, neither will our coaches. Neither does anyone. And you have to look at your life at the end of the day, and that brings me to our next core value, which is integrity. Integrity is not always getting it right, or none of us would have it. It's really when you don't get it right, what do you do? And you look at the end of the day of the film of your game, the film of your practice, the film of your life, the film of your decisions, and they don't lie. And you have to own that at the end of the day. And guess what? Sometimes there are consequences when you don't get it exactly right. We fumbled the ball eight times. You're probably not going to win. There's a consequence to that. You made a really poor decision. There may be a consequence to that. And that's okay. It's not great. And there may be consequences. You must accept those consequences. Make the necessary changes and get up the next day and play the next play. And that's the way we will approach our team is owning every single day as an individual day and the more of those days that we win, the more games we're going to win on Saturday. So we have to have a team that buys into having the integrity of a single day and our decisions and our effort and our attitude, everything that can be judged. Love is the next core value. It's the ability to handle inconveniences that come with relationships. When you put a team together of 120 or 125, there are going to be a lot of different cultures, backgrounds, beliefs, issues. Um, some had father figures, some didn't. And for us to be able to come together as a truly a team, we will have to handle the inconveniences that come with the relationships and be tolerant and be great listeners and learn to get to know people and know their heart. And so love. And the last is why, which is you. We need you. We need the fans. We need the Auburn family. We need the staff. We need the players. We need everyone in this building that is involved in our program to buy into our core values to drive this train, to get it where everyone wants to be. It is, it is all of us that must pull together the Auburn family. You would notice that those acronyms spells family, and I believe that is what Auburn is all about. So why Auburn for us? I'll tell you, I have great memories here. Won a game here. Lost a couple. But I will say from a visiting coach's perspective, it is one of the most difficult places to play that I have witnessed, and that is due to our great fans and our great student body and everyone involved. I turned on that Texas A&M game. I think uh, we were at three wins for that game. I thought I was watching 
a game that would send you to the SEC championship. Now, I wasn't there, Bruce, there you are. So Bruce, was, was it that feeling in the stadium? Because it appeared that way from watching it on TV and I was just, oh my gosh, look at the passion of this place and these people. And I just, I've had some great memories here, but probably the most memorable thing I've had here was not as a coach, but as a dad. My daughter Jordan went to school here. Jill was uh, with Madison on a volleyball trip, and I had the task of moving her in. Jill uh, said her goodbyes at the house, boo-hooing, and I'm making fun of Jill, Jill. It's really not that difficult. She's going off to a good place, good school with good friends. We knew her roommate. It's not that big of a deal. I drive over, I unload the truck, hang everything like a dad's supposed to do, do everything that Jordan asked me to do, completed the project, start walking down the back stairwell of the dorm. She stops me in the middle of the stairwell and says, Dad, can we just say goodbye right here? I lost it. I literally could not talk to anyone for the next hour driving back. Jill was texting, and I said, I just can't talk right now. I'm struggling. She said, I told you. I told you. And that's one of my great memories, but... As I'm going back, I'm still thinking, man, that feeling that she had at Auburn, it was family to her. And it has remained that way, obviously, for them to come back here. So while Auburn, it's, it's Pat Dye Field, it's Jordan-Hare Stadium, it's the Tiger Walk, it's the Eagle Flight, and it's Rolling Tumors Corners, the Kick Six, it's Bow Over the Top, it's tremendous sense of community, it's pride and passion. And, that people hold for Auburn. It's the Auburn creed, man. I believe in work, hard work, which it will take. I believe in the spirit of being unafraid. I don't fear much in life, and, and I don't think our team will either. Uh, I believe in the people. It's the Auburn family. This place is special, and there's no other place that I want to be. I believe in Auburn and love it. War Eagle. We'll, we'll begin our Q&A session. Members of the media, if you'd raise your hand, we'll get to as many of you as we can. We'll pass microphones. Please identify your outlet uh, as well as your name and uh, pass the mic on once you've asked your question. First one, front row, Jason. Yeah, uh, Jason Caldwell, Auburn 247. You've referenced Cadillac a bunch already. How valuable is having someone like that in this transition to help everybody involved in, 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 in moving forward. I think the uh, words I used last night to him, um, I don't know if I had to plead and beg, I don't know, but I was planning to and, and, and went after it. And I think the, the words were just, you're invaluable. I, I, I need your wisdom. I need, you, I need you to tell me about the players. I need you to tell me about the building. I need you to tell me who is, who is really vital to, to us really getting this program back to SEC championships. And, I just, I think the word I would use is invaluable. I, I can't, I can't, um, I don't know that I can describe it any more than that. Third row. Brian Stoltz, Auburn Rivals. Uh, back in 2018, I think, uh, you told a reporter who I think kind of beats you on the golf course sometimes uh, about Rewriting your own story, rewriting your own ending. Uh, what's it like to feel that you had that chance now? You know, um, Jill and I um, laid there last night when I got back uh, to, to the place we're staying. And um, it's humbling. Um, I, you you, you want to be careful not to, um, not to sound um, like... I don't, I don't believe in deserving something. I believe in earning something. And I do believe we fought to earn this. And, and, and it's, been, it's, been some, it's been rocky at times. But um, you can become overcome with emotion um, because of, truthfully, I feel like, and this is no offense to another school or anything, but. I feel like um, I've, I've leapfrogged um, where, where I was uh, at that time uh, by being in this family and this culture here. And I loved my time there, but 
I see this as a, uh, I see this as one of the top 10 football programs in the nation. And I believe that. And so I don't want to get emotional. We, we had that cry last night. So we've celebrated that. And, um, you know, I don't know if rewriting the story is exactly the right word, but it's going to make for a good, good ending. Um, you know, we're already, um, I couldn't win any more in life than look over there and look at my friends and my, my family. I, I, I can't win any, any bigger than that. So I'm the most competitive dude I know, but um, uh, and I want to win in football games, but I've already won in, in life, and that's, that matters a lot more. Front row, far right. Mark Murphy from Inside the Auburn Tigers and 24-7 Sports. Uh, you've done this before, transitions at Arkansas State. Uh, Ole Miss and Liberty, what were the important things for you that, that made those things work well? And also, have, have you talked to Gus? All right, two questions. Let's take the first one. Um, staff, staff has to drive the culture. I'm not near as concerned about X's and O's with most of the staff. The defensive coordinator has got to be masterful at that. But the rest of the staff, obviously, I, I, if I were to show you the number of texts I've received of, of big-time college coaches wanting to come to this place, it's going to be very difficult, very difficult to decide. But what will be the deciding factor is putting a staff together that I think complements each other and drives the culture consistently. There is none of this. Well, you know, that's a suggestion. No, it's not a suggestion. This is how we do it. And it's proven to turn programs and work everywhere we've been very, very fast. And so I think getting the culture, uh, the buy-in from the staff to, the, to drive the culture is, is the biggest priority. Obviously, the, the priority, the first priority will always be our players. Um, so I've got to jump in as soon as I can and try to handle both of these at the same time and getting to know our players, watching tape, finding out where we need to plug into the roster and, and get in the portal or where our high school recruiting's at. And uh, we're, we're short on time. We've got to get going and, and get going fast. But those two, our players are the priority always. I have an open door policy for our players. They can come to my assistant and say, I'd love to see coach and I may be in the offensive film room. She knows, come get me. Because players have the priority and my relationship with them is paramount to me. I want to win their heart, and I'm going to be dead truthful with them about where they are. I will, they'll never have to wonder, but at the end of the day, I should be preparing them to create value for themselves for the time that they're with us, because football is going to end, and if we waste all of that time worrying about just the scoreboard and just how many touchdowns he threw or ran, and not creating value for them for life after football, boy, we've missed, we've missed the boat. And so I've got to have a staff that drives that because our players are the priority. Last question, Gus. Uh, yes, Gus is a dear friend. He and Christy have been uh, faithful to Jill and I uh, for years, in particular the last six or seven. And um, I think he's one of the gr a great human being, a, a dear friend, loyal, strong, um, just to thank Thank so much of Gus and Christie. We're going to stay on the front row in the middle. Ryan Hennessy, NBC 13, WVTM in Birmingham. Uh, you look at the building you're in right now, brand new facility. I can see the smile on your face. One of the best, if not the best, in the country for college football. The game day atmosphere is second to none. How far away is this program from getting back to that national championship form that the 2010 time was? And I wish I could say I haven't had a chance to even evaluate our roster yet. Um, I, I don't think, and you know, Cadillac could probably help me with this answer, but I, I, I think we can turn it fairly fast with the new world we're in. Because I believe with the commitment that's been shown by our fans, boosters, and administration to, to um, invest in things like this that matter in recruiting, and they matter in, in the NIL on the Victory Fund, and all of that matters today. Um, and it didn't, 10 years ago, you didn't have that, and so the turnaround's a little different. Kids couldn't just leave a school and come to Auburn. Um, they can now. And so I do think we've got to be careful to get the right kids that fit our culture, but 
at the same time, it's much easier to add to your roster now than it was, you know, when I took over at Ole Miss and they hadn't won an SEC game in two years. And obviously, we, we we're going to some New Year sixes in year three and four. Uh, so I see no reason why, you know, with the, with the current structure, we can't do this fairly fast. Coach, we're going to go far back. No, no, excuse me, far to the cameras. Thank you. Jack Patterson, WRBL News 3. Coach, what lessons have you learned from your, pre, your last stop at Liberty that you're going to be able to take with you here to this new endeavor here at Auburn? Well, the, the, the culture is going to be the same that we've created. I, I know that it works and it wins, but, you know, I had, I had great five years at Ole Miss. Um, they were great to me. My story is well documented. Um, I let some people down, a lot of people down, and uh, I'm very sorry for that at the end of that. But I've spent the last six years – uh, trying to earn the respect and trust of my family, teams, administrations, everyone that was around me. And, you know, that's the lesson I probably learned is just keep working to earn people's trust. And when they get to know you, man, a lot of that, that, that comes when they get to know you if they just give you the chance to earn that trust. And I'm thankful for Liberty, um, you know, obviously letting me earn that. And I think they would say, man, the guy was uh, – was uh, he served us well, and I want to do the same at Auburn. I think uh, probably the number one thing that the last six years, the last four years, is this idea of when your commitment to something is greater than your feelings, uh, that's when you really get the results that you want. And there's a lot of times we operate out of our feelings as players or men or coaches or in general. And if we operated out of our true commitment for me, it's to faith, family, and friends, and family being my Auburn family now. Uh, when we operate out of our commitment to those, usually at the end of the day, we really like our decisions. Fourth row, Bill. Raise your hand, please. Thank you. Yes, Bill Cameron, uh, ESPN 1067. Coach, you, you were talking about uh, staff. Any ideas on the staff now or timeline as to when you'd like to have them in place? Um, I've, got a, I've got a list of every, of every position and uh, a lot of great candidates. There's some here. There's some where I just came from, and they're all around the country. I'm constantly getting texts. Um, my agent, who I have forgot to thank, um, Jimmy Sexton, is uh, he's not only been – a great agent, but he, he has been a dear friend to me through a lot of tough times. And he's just, uh, he's been strong and faithful, and I thank him. But he's got a whole list, too, that he presents to me this morning. So, you know, I, I just hadn't had a chance yet. I was so hesitant during the process to respond to media or to respond to uh, this guy that when, would text me, and I'm like, oh, my God, that'd be a great hire. But I was so, I was so, I just was so guarded um, because I wasn't real sure exactly what John was thinking or Rich was thinking. I knew I was in it, but you really couldn't, you really couldn't tell exactly where you were. You felt kind of good every time I talked to him and, and um, loved visiting with him. And um, so I was just so guarded that I really haven't turned my attention to that yet, but it will happen quickly this afternoon, hopefully, when I wind up all of the the events of this morning. I'm going to go to the left here, third row, Joe. Hugh, Joseph Goodman, AL.com. Uh, two questions. Uh, one, there was a time when Greg Sankey wouldn't let anyone in the SEC hire you. Um, I'm wondering why you think you deserve a second chance. And then second question, why are second chances so important? Um, I'm, I'm not sure that's accurate about Commissioner Sankey. I, I, would, uh, I would have to. I've had a really good, honest relationship with him through all of it, and I think he's, um, he's never done anything but shoot me dead straight and tell me what he thought was best, um, not only for the conference uh, but for me. And I appreciate a man that treats you like that and uh, thankful um, for all, all of his leadership. I think it was the right move uh, for me. As far as second chances, man, I don't know anybody in this room that doesn't deserve a second chance. And 
And truthfully, if, if everybody's life was documented as mine, it, it would probably be uncomfortable for, for, for a lot of people. And, uh, you know, I don't know if deserve is the word, but I sure am thankful for grace and, uh, and, and that I do get to keep fighting every day for another chance. Inaccurate about? Well, I've never been told that by Commissioner Sankey, so I don't, um, I'm not sure that's accurate. I believe I had a chance just to get into the league as an offensive coordinator, and I chose to go to Liberty as the head coach. So I don't, I'm pretty confident of that. And, um, but I, I thought, I did seek his advice, which I value. And why do you think you deserve a second I just said, I think everyone deserves a second chance, and I think uh, we fought to uh, to earn people's trust back, and we'll continue to do that. We're gonna go to the middle, Michael. Raise your hand, please. Thank you, uh, Michael Giddens with the War Report, uh, Coach. Um, you, as an offensive head coach, I know you're gonna hire an offensive coordinator, but do you have an idea if? you plan to call plays this year? And also, uh, second part, uh, what, is your, what is your strategy for utilizing the portal? Auburn is gonna have some attrition at different uh, positions. Yeah, uh, question one, I've called the plays my whole career. Um, I honestly, uh, sitting here today, am contemplating if maybe in the new world of rebuilding the Auburn football team, and the work that's gonna take to capture the players and recruit, um, maybe I should get some help in that. And um, really what kind of spurred it on truthfully is some of the text I've gotten. And I've watched them and I'm like, wow, they're really good at what they do. And um, probably better than me. And I think I'm pretty good at it, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm honest. And when I watch some of their games, I, I think, I could really help them with their red zone, and they could really help us with everything else. And, um, and so I'm wide open right now and looking forward to having some of those discussions um, with, with these candidates. Um, your second question was the portal. I think year one, portal will be, will be a big priority. I don't, and again, this is without me talking to recruiting yet to find out kind of where we are with the high school recruits. I do believe in building it with high school kids and filling in with portal. Can we do that in year one? I'm not sure uh, yet. So I would anticipate it being heavier toward the portal. We're gonna go to the right, third row, John. Morning, Coach. Uh, Good morning. You. I'm sure you're aware there's been some backlash from fans on, on social media and everything about your hire based on the past. What would you say to them and how can you win them over? You obviously won over uh, the president and athletic director. You know, the, the, the same thing that I've kind of said is, um, you know, please give me a chance to, to earn your trust. Give me some time, get to know us, get to know our family, get to know the truth of our story. And um, I think that the ones who have done that have said, man, you know what, I kind of like this guy and I kind of like his family and, you know, that, but that's all you can ask is, man, give us a chance to, to earn your trust and I think you'll like the, the end result. We're gonna go to the second row. We're gonna hit three in a row, starting with Tom. Tom Graynail.com. Uh, Hugh, there was a report yesterday that as part of taking this job, you've agreed to relinquish control of your social media media accounts. Is that accurate? And uh, no, that's kind of that's that's not accurate. Okay. <laughs> I mean, how could you in this day and time? Keep it. I think there may be wisdom in it, though. <laughs> Justin Hokinson, Auburn Live on Three Sports. Um, we've heard a lot about the pros, about you as a coach. What are some things, I guess, that you think you need to work on or things that you've learned over the last few years that you're still learning um, that you can sort of develop and you think you can bring into this job? I'm really trying to be a better listener. I'm not great at that. Um, I'm better now. The last four years, I've had to really make myself work at that. And I think that's what players really need today is, man, this head coach will listen to me and hear the whole story. And, under, and it helps me understand them more so that I can coach them better. 
And I think that's the number one thing that uh, I'm continuing to, to try to develop in myself is to be a, a, a really a, a good listener to our young men and their families and so that after I complete my listening and understand them better and I shoot them straight, um, I think they accept it. Um, we feel like we're in a relationship. It's not that, dude, just stay eligible, stay out of trouble, and make that scoreboard work out for me so that we can get everything that all the Auburn family wants and they can sing our praises. That's all great. We want that. But um, I, I think we really win their heart when we, when we are in relationship with them. And that's why I'm considering even backing off some in the offense just so that I don't miss that. New bias. <clears throat> New bias, Wilborn, L.com. Um, Hugh, um, good to meet you today. Hope you're doing well. Good to meet you. I can't find you. I'm right here. It's, uh, oh, okay. Uh, All right. Pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'd ask you how you're doing, but it seems like you're in a good mood. But from there, talk to me about Robbie Ashford and how he might compare to Malik Willis. That's yeah. a question a lot of people want to know. So we've had great success with our Liberty transfer. I mean, our, our Auburn transfers at Liberty. Obviously, Malik Willis comes there and becomes a draft pick at quarterback. And uh, we had Jay Hardy and, and, and Dre um, D. Lyman that came from there. And they, they were incredibly good for us this year. And, and so when I watched Robbie's last game, um, I think I told John, um, all right, I'm, I'm, he's got me intrigued now. You know, I, I knew he could run around, and obviously that's, that's a very positive, but I saw him make some throws in that game. There's one in particular in the right corner of the end zone that was a, a really, really, really difficult pass, and uh, it, was, it was beautifully done. Um, I do think I have a gift to help develop quarterbacks. I think if you look at everywhere we've been, we've, uh, we've had pretty good success with that. And I'm um, very anxious to get to work with not only him, he's a tremendous athlete, but I think there's other good players in that room too. And, but uh, I was impressed with how I thought he improved. Coach, Jake Stansel, WBRC in Birmingham. Uh, we, of course, we know you've beaten Alabama while at Ole Miss. How much are you looking forward to matching up against Nick Saban in the Iron Bowl? Well, you don't, you don't take this job if you're not uh, built to, to, to want that. And uh, I welcome that. Uh, I want it. I want to be in that arena. I, I want, uh, uh, you know, I just, I, I, I really, really, really enjoy that type of game. And I have a great respect for Nick. And he and Miss Terry have been really good friends to us, too. Um, but um, I hope they're a little nervous today. <laughs> Coach, we're going to take two more. Third row and then front row. Jeff. Hi, Coach. Hello. Um, I was wondering if uh, Kirk, is John available to answer a question? No? He will not today? Sure, that's but if okay. If you can identify your name and no, affiliation. No, Jeff, Jeff Thank Spiegel, you. ABC 3340 in Birmingham, Coach. Uh, are, you, are you surprised at the backlash that has occurred? from all this, and I know you've already addressed like how you're going to handle that, but how difficult of a process do you think that's going to be to win over the entire Auburn fan base? Uh, truthfully, I really don't know um, the magnitude of backlash because, believe it or not, I just hadn't been on any social media in the last three or four weeks. Um, I have an account, but somebody else has, has, has been – running it, but uh, so I, I really don't know. And I, look, I've come to grips with everybody doesn't know me, everybody doesn't care to get to know me, and everybody has an opinion, and they're entitled to that. Uh, all I would ask is that the ones I care about is the Auburn family and the players and the administration and my family. That, that's the ones that matter, and that's the ones I'm saying uh, take the time to get to know us and – um, as with anyone, all of us have made a mistake before. And I think how we have handled it as a family and how I've handled it as owning it and moving forward and playing the next play and working to get better and learn from it, you know, that's all I can do. And I'll continue to do that every single day. And what I did was what I did, but it's not who I am. 
I know that, they know that, and hopefully everyone else will get to know that. But I really can't spend my time worrying about whatever it is that, uh, that's catching the attention of, of, of the backlash. So I just want to move forward and continue to do what I've done the last six years and put my hand to the plow and go to work and don't look back. Front row. Hi, Hugh. Rosie Hi. Vangelo, WSFA. Um, I know you said that this first year is going to be heavy in the transfer portal, uh, but how would you describe yourself as a recruiter, and when do you think you will start? There's a lot of local talent in the area. Man, I can't wait. I'm begging uh, Rich and those guys to let's finish up our schedule so I can go recruit. Um, our first day out can be this weekend, and I've got to figure out, but I haven't even talked to, to see where we are with the high school, but I know it's one of the better years in the local area, and we've got to go make some headway in a, in a hurry. I think I'm really good in recruiting in the living room. I think I'm really good at casting our vision. I think I'm really good at building relationships with them and the significant people in their decision-making process. Um, Auburn is easy to sell. Just come and see. That'll be our message. Come and see. Come and see. Come and get the feel. Come see. And if we get them here, I think um, it'll be tough to beat us. Coach, thank you for your time. Uh, just a real quick thing, we're going to do a photo op up here with, with John and Coach Freeze, and then we'll do a photo op with Coach and the family. Thank, Thank you so you. much.